omnipotent God, an omniscient God, an omnipresent God. Hallelujah, Lord. Ever present, never failing. Hallelujah, Lord. Faithful to the end. We 
we are indeed your masterpiece, your workmanship. And Father, as it is so, we cannot be in land, we cannot be a masterpiece in land this morning. In some ways, Lord. You created a masterpiece to live in a masterpiece, to try a masterpiece. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Jesus, we look forward to the new things. Stir it up in our hearts this morning. Stir it up, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Are we in agreement this morning? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, no, no, no. 
morning, Father, we thank you for the freedom, Lord. We thank you, we thank you for the release of our families. We thank you for the release of me and my Lord. That may be the flow, Lord, in those things. Thank <laughs> you. 
and let it be a seed. What's the seed in your heart? The fruit will come out. Yes. Work that way and become until it is planted deep in the, in the good soil of your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. His message to us forever. Just look at your neighbor and say, give a high five to your neighbor.
in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've got a song for you called Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Come on, come on, come on. The band is the lead us. Thank you, Lord. Breakthrough this morning. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
morning is not good enough for us to fit in. We want to stand out. It's not good enough for us to exist. We want to excel. It's not good enough for us to survive. We want to thrive. As we approach the courts of heaven today to unlock and to unlock our destinies, our blessings, our victories, and everything that has been held back and held down over a period of time. But in the course of this week, we have put ourselves out there to pray and to fast and to seek God's face. As we tag this prayer, time of prayer and fasting, breakthrough, that you come to this place and that you do not go without your reward going forward. Amen. Amen. Now let me give you some help and background into what we're going to say and do um, this morning. Um, in Luke chapter 11, Jesus reveals himself as the Father to the church. He says, when you pray, pray in this fashion, our Father who art in heaven. So he says that the Father, he recognizes him as the Father. And then in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 onwards, thank you, he recognizes the Father as friend. So he reveals God the Father as the Father first and foremost to us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. We are not strangers. We are not aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. We are accepted in the beloved. And so he reveals the Father to us as a father in John chapter 11. He takes it a little further in John chapter, in Luke chapter 11 and he reveals the Father as a friend. He says a man came at midnight and knocked on his friend's door and said open for us. 
that we might get some grain. So he revealed the Father as a friend. So his Father to us, his friend to us. But Jesus took it a step further in Luke 18, verses 1 to about verse 4. He reveals the Father to us as a judge. Amen. And now, so this morning, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to the myriads of angels in joyful assembly, to the congregation of the firstborn enrolled in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, of the spirits of just men made perfect in the sight of God. As judge, our God and our Father must observe the legalities that operate in the realm of the Spirit. Even though He is our Father, even though He is our friend, even though He is our Savior, He must observe the legalities that operate in the realm of the Spirit. It's important to observe that. When Satan, who is the adversary, according to 1 Peter 5 and 8, the Bible says that we have an adversary in the form of Satan. And the word adversary is a Greek word. It's the Greek word antidikos. And it means one who brings a lawsuit against. Now, we all know that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And that the book of Revelation says that he goes day and night to the Father to accuse us to the Father. And the word accuse is not to go skin or scandal in the ears of God. He is taking a case. He's got a document printed out in his attaché case and he presents it to the Father concerning your sins, concerning your shortcomings, and he petitions the Father for permission to do what he needs to do in your life, to harass your body, to attack your family, to attack your finances, and the hands of God the Father are tied. But we are going to unravel that this morning. The adversary means one who brings a lawsuit. A lawsuit against you. We understand what a lawsuit is in the realm of the natural. Now bring it over to the realm of the spirit. Amen. If we do not remove the legal right that Satan enjoys, he can continue to land curses, to destroy us, to wreak havoc, and everything else that he finds permission to do against us. He has a case against us that he is bringing in the realm of the spirit. And God, as judge, cannot stop this until we give him, that is God, the legal right to stop it. He desires desperately as a father, as Jesus revealed him as the father before judge, so that we would understand what kind of a father we have. That we have in heaven a good father, not a bad father. He said, if you earthly fathers can do good where your children are concerned, how much more your heavenly father in heaven? But I'm going to show you this morning that we need to give him the right to intervene and to act on our behalf. Amen to that. He desires desperately to stop the works of the enemy, but without a case being brought up to the courts of heaven, his hands are tied. Let me give you some understanding and then we'll delve into the word. We're still in the introduction phase. Are we still here this morning? Psalm 115 verse 16 says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Let me stop and explain this very quickly before I move on. When God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning of time, He created man and He gave man authority over the earth. Are we good with that? When Satan so when Adam sold out to Satan, he handed over his lease, his rights, his power that he had over the earth to Satan. When Satan approached Jesus, he took him up on a high pinnacle, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the flesh, and he said, all of these are mine. It has been given to me. Question, when was it given to him? 
was given to him when Adam defaulted in the garden. God never gave it to a fallen being. God gave it to a created being, a perfect being. So Satan said, it has been given to me. And then listen to what he says. And I will give it to whomsoever I desire. So, if you are wondering why there is such evil in the world today, why is it that there is so much a crime? Why is it that there are so much of painful things happening to children, to women? Things that are happening that boggle our mind, disturb us and hurt us deeply. You need to understand that Satan has taken away Adam's right and he is operating legally in the earth. But we are going to do something about that this morning. Remember, remember, God cannot compromise himself as judge to fulfill his earthly and his heavenly passion in our lives. In other words, if something atrocious is happening to you, God cannot simply step in, sort the devil out and stop him from what he's doing. The devil will turn around and say, you are not a just God. Yes. Adam sinned. Sin entered the world. This man is in a situation in which he is open to violation and he is open to my attack. You've got to allow me to do it. So God cannot compromise his integrity and who he is just to help you. We're getting this. Otherwise, the devil wins and God loses, even though his passion is always good. We grasp with this principle. When we understand what we are saying this morning, we will stop asking, why didn't God do something about it? Isn't that an age-old question? When something bad happens, we all gather around the table and say, why didn't God do something? Why didn't God stop it? We've got to understand that Satan looks for opportunities in the realm of the spirit. And he exercises that right. Amen. Watch this now. When the devil has a legal right to perform evil, God must allow it until someone comes to the court of heaven to contest, to contest that right. We must realize, as judge, the Lord will allow the devil certain liberties when he has a case against us. This is not because God desires it, but because legally he can't stop it until we deal with it. In Luke chapter 4, well, I shared that with you, Satan took the authority away from, from Adam. But now here's the good news. Satan's lease is running out. Amen. You ever wonder why we as Christians keep talking about the end of the world? It's not the end of the planet. It's the end of this age. So Satan has got to give up all rights that he has. But in the meantime, we can operate in dominion and in authority in the sphere of influence that God has given you. And we're going to get into that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So you've got to know and recognize God as judge and God as our Savior. And if God has to act against His principles, it would make Him less of God. Therefore, it is our job as His people, the Ecclesia, to put in place the legal precedence required for God to work as our Father on our behalf. We must know when to simply pray or when to bring a court case and to raise a matter before the Lord in the high courts of heaven. For example, generational curses, family patterns of weakness, family patterns of sickness that continue to perpetuate itself from one generation to another must be brought to the high courts of heaven. Because somewhere in your family line, some individual, some person has given the enemy to the right to step into your family and entrench his wickedness. And it doesn't stop with you when they lower you into the grave, it is passed to your family. And like we said last week, we want to stop it right here in this generation. We're not going to be a handover generation. That's going to be happy to take the devil's stuff and simply hand it to our generation. No sir, it stops with us. We're making a matter out of it, a legal matter out of it. Daniel 7 verse 10 says, the court was seated and the books were open. Mm. We must understand that in heaven there's a court system. Do you realize that we have a court system, a judicial system on earth? We have courts and we've got high courts. Where do you think they found that? You think man in his infinite wisdom came up with that? It's what exists in heaven. Mm. And God showed that wisdom to men. 
so that we can carry out justice on earth. But it's what exists in heaven. When God revealed the tabernacle to Moses, it was after the pattern of the tabernacle that was in heaven. The judicial system we're talking about is one that exists in heaven. Do you not know that the Bible says one day we will all stand, well, the unsaved others, will stand before the great white throne judgment. God's not waiting to build a throne for that. He's already got a throne. It's going to be one day that the ungodly will stand before that throne and they shall have to give an account of themselves one day. In the meantime, let's stick with the message. There are courts in heaven. And Satan, who is the accuser of the brethren, constantly goes to the Father with stories about us. Amen. The first thing we must do from this morning onwards is to step into the courts of heaven and get off the battlefield. You've been fighting it too much and too long in the natural. You've been trying in the natural, but you need to come into the high courts of heaven as God has shown me in the course of this week. If we have rebuked the devil and he hasn't moved, it's because he has a legal right to be there. And remember, adversary means an opponent. It means a prosecutor. Now in a court of law, you've got a judge and you've got a prosecutor that prosecutes this person. But this person that's been prosecuted must have an attorney to represent him. We cannot represent ourselves in the courts of heaven. There's a prosecutor, Satan. He's a legalist. He knows the law. He understands the law infinitely, right down to the minutest of detail. He understands it. But the good news is we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus, the righteous, the holy one. The book of Isaiah says his name shall be called Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and he's got another title, Counselor. Yes. Counselor means a lawyer, yes. means an advocate. Now the one who made the law knows the law. Yes. Satan may try to use the law against us. Jesus knows how to work the law. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. So what's this? In the parable, in Luke 18, a widow woman is seeking a verdict of justice from an unrighteous judge. Luke chapter 18, you know the story. Amongst other things, one glaring aspect of the story stands out. The woman, in her efforts to deal with the adversary, never spoke to the adversary. She went to the judge. You need to come off the battlefield. Stop rebuking the devil if the matter is still defiant, if the sickness is still defiant, if the problem is still standing against you. You need to come off the battlefield. In this parable, she did not speak to the adversary. She went to the judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been hanging out too much with the devil telling him where to get off this Holy Ghost bus and how to leave and what to do and what not to do. It's time to go to the judge and get justice. From above. Hallelujah. But she went to the judge. She understood, listen closely, that when a rendering is obtained from the judge, her adversary becomes of no consequence. When you obtain a verdict from the heavenly courts, your sickness becomes of no consequence. Your poverty becomes of no consequence. Because a verdict has been reached and rendered and spoken from the high courts of heaven. The adversary would have to bend the knee to the verdict of heaven. The adversary would have to bend the knee to the verdict of heaven. Once the court rendered a verdict, then it would be executed and put in place. The verdict from the court is the legal wrestling, the executing the executing of it to put it in place is the battle. We have tried to run to the battlefield without the verdict from the court. You've been fighting the battles too long without a verdict from the court. You've been trying to deal with the sickness without a verdict from the court. You've been trying to fight the spirit of poverty without a verdict from the court. But this morning, child of God, you are not leaving until you get a verdict from heaven that says not guilty. A verdict that says justified this morning. A verdict that says innocent this morning. A verdict that says grant to him compensation. Grant to her healing in Jesus' name. The verdict of heaven must overturn the circumstances of your life. Amen. 
We have found ourselves ineffective and even soundly defeated. Those days are over as we get over the battlefield and into the courtroom. Amen. Amen. Allow me please just to share a very brief testimony to help you understand and implement what I'm talking about this morning before we get into communion. I just felt compelled by the Lord to share my own experience so that it may encourage someone out there. As some of you are perhaps aware, my family and I have, my family and I have moved house recently. But what you may not be aware are all the reasons and factors in place as to why we had to move, and why we felt the need to move house. The neighborhood around us practically turned on us. Literally every house surrounding our house became a house with people in it that were our enemies. We received everything from hate mail to blackmail to ugly stuff being said and done about us. Practically the entire area around us just turned on us. And it just happened overnight. It just happened overnight. We tried to brave the abuse and the anti-sentiment. We tried our level best to pray and keep our heads above it and remain righteous without doing anything, without becoming vindictive, saying or doing anything. As we are ministers of the gospel, we've got to try and walk a straight and narrow path. And it's sometimes expensive, it's sometimes costly, it's sometimes heavy. And you feel that you need, you have the right to lash out and do something. So we tried to, to brave the abuse and the sentiment. However, one neighbor was the absolute worst. The absolute worst. Hmm. Am I talking to some people this morning? <laughs> you got Mr. Wilson as a neighbor? <laughs> to talk about the straw that breaks the camel's back. Everything from loud parties on a Saturday night into the wee hours of the morning. And I must minister the next day. To make matters worse, this neighbor that we we'll call Mr. Wilson decided to get a dog. <laughs> but he got a barking dog. A loud barking dog. I don't know if you get dogs that don't bark. I'm mean, out there. We're looking for that option. A loud barking dog. Now, if you know the houses in Kensington, they're, re they're relatively small. And so if someone says something in his property, you can hear it. Even a loud barking dog, it sounds like the dog's barking in your yard. So we tried everything possible to, 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 to calm the situation and to, and to bring down the anti-sentiment that was really growing. But despite our efforts to resolve these niggly issues, the animosity simply grew. Until we realized that we are not fighting flesh, we are fighting the enemy. We realized beyond a shadow of a doubt it was the devil behind a lot of these people and behind Mr. Wilson. We realize that. We realize that. However, the final straw came when Mr. Wilson decided to burn fires right on the boundary wall of my bedroom and my kitchen and burn fires, nasty fires, with a rancid smell that comes over the wall into my kitchen, into my bedroom all night long. And I've got CCTV cameras set up around my property and I can see the fire burning. It's like someone is stalking the fire. Eventually we realize that this person is performing witchcraft. So we said, well, that's it. Enough's enough. I drafted out a full letter enlisting my grievances to the Lord. I brought the person's name. I didn't tackle all the neighbors, all the neighborhood, all the people in the neighborhood, just the one. I enlisted the grievances. I pointed out to the Lord that I tried to do what was right. I pointed out to the Lord that I did not initiate anything, but that I was on the receiving end of everything ugly and everything nasty. And I tried my level best to be his servant without reproach and without rebuke in the situation. But being human, Lord, I said there's maybe something I said. Maybe it's just the way I look at people that offends people. But whatever I've done wrong, I repent of it. Repentance is key. And I brought the letter. I took it. I normally use a Rhodes Park as my hunting ground where I pray and I really call on the name of the Lord and it's nice and clear and open and nobody can hear you. 
And I lifted up this letter of grievance to the Lord and I brought it and I said, Lord, I summoned this person to the high courts of heaven. I said, look at the grievances that they have. They have caused me the inconvenience, the hurt they've caused me and my family. I recognize that the devil is behind this person. And so I bring this matter right into the high courts of heaven because I have no recourse in the natural. I cannot go to the police. The police cannot help me. There's no institute that can step in and intervene and stop what is going on in this neighborhood against me. I recognize this is spiritual. It's from the devil. And I bring my case before the high courts of heaven in the name of Jesus. And I prayed there. I prayed in the spirit. I took authority over the devil. I prayed in the spirit until I felt I broke through. We penetrated the heavens. We done warfare down there. And I felt good afterwards. And I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayed for some of you as I faces came across my, my mind. And prayed. I was about to turn around, jump in the car and come back, come back home. And the Lord said to me, now go and tell that man to stop doing what he's doing. I said, Lord, oh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> Please, this is Mr. Wilson. He is most unreasonable. He's unapproachable. He doesn't conform to any sort of sense or logic. You can't talk to him. That's why I'm here today praying to you. <laughs> the Lord said, go and tell him to stop it. I said, all right. I'm going to, have to argue with the Lord. Got him in the car. I'm driving over and I said, well, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get there. It's about midday. This guy's at work. I'll knock. There'll be no answer. And I'll tell the Lord, look, I, I obeyed you. <laughs> so I go and I knock. And of course, there's no answer. So I knock again to give the Lord the benefit of the doubt. And by the third time, the curtain opened. And I motioned to the person, come out. Well, not like that. <laughs> the person eventually stepped out, but it looked like the fear of God had got a hold of this person. Don't ask me why and what. They, would, they just slipped at me like with big eyes. So I said, you're the person burning fires at the back. No, no, no. He says, it's not me. He points to the hills round about us. And he says, it's coming from the vapors that are up on the hill. I said, no, no, no. I live behind you. Someone is burning fires here, and it burns all night, and it comes into my house. Now, I, I would like you to know that that is not acceptable. I'm asking you to stop that immediately. He says, no, no, no problem. I won't do this ever again. Sorry, this will never happen again. And so we parted ways. I came home, and I told my wife, it was still during lockdown, I told my wife. She said, you did what? You did what? I said, yes, this is what I did. I went to the park, I prayed, I took my matter to the high courts of heaven. I summoned my lawyer, Jesus, who escorted me into the court realms of heaven. I brought my case before the Lord, and I felt like I was heard. I know for a fact that I was heard because the Lord said, now I'm going to tell him to stop doing this. Let me tell you, guess what? It was like we were on honeymoon. There was no barking dogs. There was no fires. There was no loud noise. But the ball was already in motion. We were already preparing to move. But nothing happened to the point that I actually went in my COVID-19 disguise. Hat on, mask right up to my right. And I walked past the guy's room to help a look. I, I thought the guy shut it out. I was about to repent and pray and say, Lord, I didn't mean to pray that hard. I just found the works of the devil. I didn't pray the guy out of his house. But it was like it wasn't me. And it was honeymoon till the time we left. Here's the point I'm making. When you have enough, have you had enough? It says here in Genesis 27, 40, And it shall come to pass, when you become restless, you shall break the yoke from off your neck. When you become restless, say today, enough is enough. I said to the Lord today, enough is enough. I'm trying to live my life. I'm trying to serve you. And I've got the entire neighborhood that's turned its tail and, and the attitude towards me. How do I contend? How do I live? Help me, Lord. I went to the Lord and I said, listen, Lord, shall not the judge of all the heavens and the earth do what is right? I engaged him and invited him into my situation and said, Lord, will you not judge between us? Like David said, between him and Saul, will you not judge between us? Will you not judge between me and these people? If you find fault with me, show me that I might repent. But if I am innocent, then you need to stand up and you need to act on my behalf. In Jesus' name. Now I said, I don't know what's going on in the situation, Lord. Back to my story in the park. I said, but I reach up into heaven with the help and counsel of my counselor Jesus. And I obtain a restraining order from heaven and objection.
action and injunction to stop the work of the enemy, not the neighbor, not the person, but to find the work of the enemy. They must cease and desist from today. Hallelujah. Came out of there and like I told you the story. I'm not going to go over it again. But what happened? It's almost like we were on a honeymoon. The neighborhood went quiet. Absolutely quiet. I reached out to God. And I said, Lord, you need to help me. I've been trying my level best to be a good neighbor. I believe in the philosophy, good fences make good neighbors. I've observed that. You can raise the wall where need be. Amen. There's no beaten path from my house to your house to say I've been over staying my welcome and, uh, you know, just making a, 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 a nuisance of myself with one neighbor, as the Bible says. No, no, none of that. Try to do everything that's right. And I said, Lord, I ask for an injunction from heaven. I seek a restraining order. And the Lord rendered it. You'll now understand what Jesus said when he said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. But you've got to get heaven's verdict so that you can speak heaven's verdict. When you speak heaven's verdict, the devil has to listen. When we speak to him, he don't listen to us. Sir. But when we get heaven's verdict, he has to listen to us. Hallelujah. Are you fed up with the heaven? Today you need to say, enough is enough. And listen closely, child of God. When we pray such prayers, we seek compensation and we seek justice, not revenge. Not revenge. We don't ask God to send hail down on that neighbor, <laughs> Mr. Wilson. We do not ask for his hurt and for his demise. We rather pray, we rather pray peace, blessing and protection over them. And perhaps they may come into the knowledge of Christ our Savior. And wouldn't that be wonderful? Let them rather get saved. Instead of being unsaved neighbors. You know? So we don't pray for their hurt, but we pray for we pray for compensation and justice. As the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you need to understand that we've got a good God. He's fair and He's just. Bring any matter to Him. Any matter. It says He is judge of all the heavens and the earth. Glory to God. So I said, we, we, we are seeking the face of the Lord to obtain a restraining order against the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the angels can take, uh, they took uh, the, the fallen angels and they bound them. So the angels of God that are released to work on our behalf can bind the work of the enemy from arresting him. Today, enough is enough. When you grow restless, you will break his yoke from off of your neck. Is poverty good? It ain't good at all in Jesus' name. Is sickness good? It's not good at all in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. Now, how do you approach the courts of heaven? Um, number one. Let's get some overheads for you. Let's get some overheads for you. something so far? slide from the start. So how do you approach the high courts of heaven? Justice isn't going to come to you. You have to go after it. Looking at Luke 18 verse 1, the parable of the persistent widow. Luke 18 verse 1, the parable of the persistent widow. And I 
put that in there for a good reason that the system where I think. Um, we see in this parable that the woman had to go to the judge. The judge didn't come looking for her. So when, 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 when Jesus maps it out for us in the scriptures, we must understand that he does everything for good reason. And so he put this parable in there to show us many important lessons. And the one important lesson we need to learn this morning, that we need to grab a hold of this morning, is that we've got to go to court. You've got to bring your case before the Father. Just praying and insisting that something changes isn't going to change in your life. You've got to bring the case before the Father. Are oh, we seeing that this morning? She had to bring a case before the Lord and she said, avenge me. She said, avenge me of my adversary. She said, get justice for me. We need to pray for justice. Hallelujah. We've got to seek the Lord. Now hear what he says in Isaiah 43, in verse 26. He says in Isaiah 43, 26, put me in remembrance. He says, let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. This is the word of God. He says, put me in remembrance. We need to come to him with our case carefully mapped out. Your, gr your grievance carefully mapped out. Why take a matter out of it before God? You can't raise the case before God. You must know the Bible. Now, if you know the will of God, you can come to the high courts of heaven and say, this is an injustice. If you understand that sickness is not of God, you can bring it before God and say, this is an injustice. If you understand like we've been teaching, this month, that poverty is a curse. You can bring it before God and say, this is an injustice. So the little woman brought her injustice. You need to bring your injustice to God. And God says, put me in remembrance. He says, let us contend together. He says, state your case. In other words, you've got to write it down. You've got to map it out. So that God can see what you are talking about and what is uh, 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 troubling you from that matter. He says, state your case. In Isaiah 1, verses 18, he says, Come now, the Lord says, Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Hallelujah. Here the Lord says, Come, let us reason together. God is willing. He's open to you. He's open for you to come to Him and to reason with Him. And say, Lord, I've been going through this, and it's too long. It's too long. Why should I live in this situation? Why should I live like this any longer? Come and step into the situation and judge between us, Lord. Hebrews 4, 4 and 16 says, Let us boldly come to the throne of grace, that you may approach the courtrooms of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first thing you need to do is that you must initiate proceedings. Just being the way you are doesn't mean to say God's going to step in. How many people Jesus walked by in the Bible? He didn't do anything. Blind body prayers had to get his attention. Jesus asked the, 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 the lame man at the pool of, pool of uh, uh, Sodom, do you want to get well? You see? So you've got to come to him. You've got to bring your grievance to him. You've got to map out the injustice that has, that has been done to you. That's point number one. That's important. And he says, let us contend together. We must get that under the belt this morning. Number two, you need to dress up for court. Repentance is a key part of preparation for this whole session in Jesus' name. Repentance is a key part of our preparation for our court session. You cannot come into the courts of heaven with sin prevalent and still active in your life. Watch this. Zechariah 3 verse 2. And this is a picture of heaven. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. Is not this man a firebrand snatched from the fire? Verse 3. Now Joshua was dressed in filthy garments as he stood before the Lord. And the angel said to those standing with him, Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have removed your iniquity, and I will clothe you with splendid robes. You cannot stand before God with sin, and you've got the accuser of the brethren on the other side of you. Are we getting this this morning? Sin hinders our prayers from being answered. 1 Peter 3, 7 says that your prayers be not hindered. In other words, that your prayers be not resisted. In Matthew 5, 25, Jesus says, Agree with your adversary quickly. Mm. Whilst thou art in the way, lest at any time the adversary, 
that is Satan, delivers you to the judge, that's God, and the judge delivers you to the officer, and the officer puts you in prison. In other words, if you will not repent of your sin, Satan takes it to the judge, the judge has got to release a decree, hand you over to the tormentors that harass your body or your finances. In Jesus' name. So he says, repent quickly. In other words, when you sin, I always do this, this is good advice, agree with the devil. Tell him, no, that's right, devil. Mr. Devil, I agree with you. No, that, I shouldn't have said that to that person. And I shouldn't have spoken that way. I agree with you, Mr. Devil. But I'm going to repent right now. <laughs> so that he doesn't have a case to take to the Father. Now the Bible says that he accuses us day and night before the Father. Yes. And that's another reason why the Bible says you should not let the sun go down on your anger. Amen. Because if you let the sun go down on your anger, Satan's got time to type up his case and then go to heaven with it. If you repent accordingly within the day, he hasn't got a case to take to the Father. So it is important to every day to repent in prayer and make sure that the enemy does not have a case against you. Repent for the sins of omission and the sins of commission. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And so submitting to God involves humility, surrender, repentance, and submission to God. And once this is in place, Every bit of rebellion is removed from us. We can resist the devil and he will flee. In Jesus' name, amen. So number one, you need to initiate court proceedings. Number two, you need to dress up for, for court. Hallelujah. When we repent, the devil has no legal right to stay or to say, our rebuke now carries power. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. We must know when to appropriate mercy from God or when to appropriate justice from God. Some of us are too busy asking God for mercy when you should be asking for justice. And then the prayer is not answered and you're asking, why am I not getting mercy? It's not mercy you need, it's justice that you need from God. Amen. It's justice that you need from God. But we'll get into that in just a little while as we wrap things up. As you're continuing to pray, number one, bring the initiation before God. It must come from you. You've got initiated. Number two, dress up for court, meaning you must be walking in repentance, true repentance before God. Acknowledge your complicitness in the matter, if there's any, and then move on. The, the, the other thing that you need to do, you must pray for full disclosure. In other words, you must ask God, Lord, I've got this pattern of, of, of sickness. I've got this pattern of failure in my business. I've got this pattern of financial troubles that are following me. I've prayed about it. Now, Lord, you must reveal to me why is it happening over and over, year in and year out. It happens. It's the same pattern. You must pray for full disclosure in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me share a story with you. 2 Samuel chapter 21 verse 1. 2 Samuel 21 verse 1. There was a famine during David's reign that lasted three years. And they prayed and they fasted, but the famine just continued. So the Bible says that David went to God and he spent much time in prayer. And he asked the Lord, Lord, why is this happening? I'm the king. I'm a good king. Saul was the fallen king. I'm a good king by, by certain standards. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And the Lord finally showed him. And, and the Lord showed him that during Saul's reign, Saul killed the Gibeonites unlawfully and unfairly. And because of this injustice, Satan gained a foothold in the land and Satan bound the heavens and there was no rain. When David repented and made restitution to the Gibeonites, God relented and sent rain from heaven. So if the matter is persistent, we need to ask God to reveal to us why is this thing still working? Why is it still operating against me? And God is more than happy to show you why this thing is still in your life. Amen. Now watch this. Isaiah 54 verse 17, you know this so well. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, no weapon that is formed or fashioned against us will stand. No tongue that is raised against us uh, will stand because you shall condemn it, says the Bible. This is the heritage, heritage of all God's servants. But the key word in that verse is this, you shall condemn it. And that word condemn is the Hebrew word rasha that means to say, this is not applicable to me. Mm. This is unlawful. 
So whatever weapons he has fashioned against you, be it sickness, be it illness, be it uh, uh, financial challenges, you go to him and you say, this word, this attack, I have the right to condemn it because it is invalid. This is an unjust case that you are operating in my life. I've got the authority now to bind it and declare it unlawful. Hallelujah. That's another way of rebuking the devil. You have the ability to rush out, to condemn it. That is why the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 1, Therefore now, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Whatever sickness, whatever poverty is operating in your life is operating according to a law. It's a law that gives Satan the empowerment to carry it out. But it takes another law to overturn this law. How many of you know that? You know we've got gravity in, 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 on the earth, uh, scientifically speaking. But in order for a plane to take off, it's got to defy the laws of gravity. It's got to use the law of thrust and lift, and then the plane takes off. If it doesn't do that, the plane stays on the ground. So we've got to defy the laws of sin by bringing in the law of the spirit of life to overturn this law, replace this law, that a new order is set in our life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And most importantly, you need to show up for court. The widow woman made every effort to be there. Even though she wasn't summoned to court, she made a legal nuisance of herself. And we need to do the same. Make a legal nuisance of yourself and come before God. In Jesus' name, amen. Third point, as we wrap things up. Engage the advocacy of Christ Jesus, the righteous one. 1 John 2 verse 1 says, My little children, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father, Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Amen. Amen. That's in the Bible. It says we have Jesus, our advocate, and he pleads our case. Amen. So it's another good reason to get into some prayer, whether it be today or tomorrow, and say, Lord, what cases are you pleading yes. on my behalf? I'm coming into courtroom today. I'm showing up in the courtroom today because I want my verdict. I want my verdict of not guilty. I want my verdict of not sick. I am healed. I am healthy. I am well in Jesus' name. I want my verdict of I'm not poor. I'm not uh, uh, operating under a spirit of poverty. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I've got a new dispensation pronounced over my life. Amen. So we need to engage the advocacy of Christ. The question is, do you know Him as Lord and Savior this morning? Do you know Him as Lord and Savior? You must know Him as Lord and Savior in order for Him to be your advocate. For through Him, says the Bible, Ephesians 2.18, through Him we have access by one Spirit to the Father. And the word access is a Greek word that means the ability to come into a king's court without restraint. Through Him, through Christ, we've got access to the Father. We can enter the courtrooms of, of heaven. You know you can't just walk into any court today. You can't just go and walk into any court. They'll ask you, who are you? Bailiff, remove that man. <laughs> Amen. You can't just walk in. But now we have the right through Jesus to enter the high courts of heaven. Think about it. This is the highest court, court realm you can enter. It's greater than the earthly court system. And we need to understand that whatever verdict is given in heaven must happen here on earth. Whatever is decreed in heaven comes to pass on earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. One of the chief means of presenting our cases in heaven is to bring it on the basis of his character and his integrity, not mercy. Mercy follows justification. Let me read the scripture to you. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Notice it says God is faithful and just. It doesn't say He is merciful and kind to forgive us. It says He is faithful and just. He's got to forgive us on the basis of justice. Because Satan is a legalist. Adam fell into sin. As a result of Adam, we are all, all fallen into sin. So when Satan looks at us, he sees fallen beings. He sees sinful people. But when we go to God, we go to Him on the basis of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen. And so God takes what Jesus did for us on the cross and He says to Satan, they are now forgiven. Yes. Not because God's merciful or kind, but because He 
is right. And Psalm 89 says, Psalm 89, 14 says, His throne is established upon righteousness and justice. So when we approach God in courtly matters, we must approach Him on the basis of His justice. And say, Father, you are a just God. Like when I went to God, and I'm busy with other matters right now, can't get into that. I'll testify later about that. We approach Him and we say, thank you, Father. We know that you are just God, that you are fair in all your doings and in all your dealings. And if you have sinned, you say, Lord, against you, and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, but that you may be just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And declare it before God and open it up before God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we approach God on the basis of His character and His integrity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now we've come through this week of prayer and fasting. And um, some of you have highlighted issues, like Pastor Rogers pointed out. You've uh, identified some situations that are applicable to you. Bring them before God in repentance this morning. While the music is playing softly, we're going to ask the pastors, elders, and deacons to begin to serve us the communion elements this morning. And we're going to do a powerful prayer this morning as we bring things to a close this morning and we bring this fast to an end as well. This is known as the High Court Prayers. We're going to do it in just a little while. Let's begin to serve communion, some music playing softly as we get our hearts ready for it this morning. Bring Jesus name.
creator, our sustainer, and our protector. You are the just God of all the earth, sitting on your throne of judgment, the high court of heaven. You, Lord, execute righteousness and justice for all that are oppressed. You are the Lord of the Sabaoth. You are the ruler over all, the God of all angelic armies that fights against our enemies and avenges us of our adversaries. Beside you there is no savior. Because of your great love towards us and your love for justice, you forsake not your saints, but you come to their aid to uphold justice upon your throne in heaven. Now this is a set time of your favor. The enemy has been oppressing your children. He has been resisting us. But now, Lord, we call upon you to dismantle everything that is out of line with heaven's government in our lives. Hear our cry, O Lord. Be gracious and hearken to us. Restore justice and judgment in all our situations. For you love righteousness and you hate wickedness. Bring your righteous judgment upon our adversary and against all that he is doing. Punish and penalize him for what he has put us through. Every suffering, every humiliation, every shame, every embarrassment, every loss, every entrapment, every sickness, and every attack of the devil. He is the perpetrator. He is behind all injustice. And I pray in the name of Jesus, deal with him and deliver us out of every affliction, restore to us everything he has stolen from us and our ancestors. Everything delayed, bring it forth now in the season. I command the release of inventions. Next slide. I command the release of inventions, opportunities, discoveries, blessings, organizations, ministries, industries, creative ideas, relationships, Contracts, awards, promotions, inheritances, and an all increase that has been fraudulently held up, misdirected, sabotaged, blocked, stolen, or destroyed. Execute your vengeance against this enemy speedily. Bring to us the full recompense that is due to us as the redeemed heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, that we may advance your kingdom in all the earth. Crush the oppressor and all wickedness and establish your justice among men and nations. We ask this by faith in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. If you identify with that, go to the Lord in prayer right now. Break bread. Receive communion this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, as you break bread in faith this morning. Believing and trusting God for a mighty release, a verdict from heaven. What situation are you dealing with this morning that needs heaven's verdict? Believe with me that heaven is going to render its verdict right now over your life and over your situation. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray this word, and I pray the blessing over your people in Jesus' name. I pray the blessing over your people in Jesus' name. The word of God says that we might receive the blessing of Abraham through faith, by the Spirit, in the promises of God. Now I command and I speak that blessing over your people. In the name of Jesus this morning over their lives, I pray the blessing, the blessing of Abraham over them, the blessing of increase, the blessing of promotion, the blessing of God of success. In the name of Jesus, the work of their hands to be blessed of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray Psalm 1 and verse 3 that whatever they extend their hands to do will be blessed of the Lord from this point onwards in Jesus' name. I pray to Deuteronomy 8.18 that they will receive the power and the ability to gain wealth in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior this morning. I pray that you be it over them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This is a season of change. Blessing and promotion has come. We receive it now in Jesus' name. As the word of the Lord came to us and said, Be prepared. It is here. It is here. It is here. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead. Take the cup this morning in Jesus' name. And we give thanks to the Lord for the basic speakings of the blood. The blood.
blood silences the voice of the enemy, silences the voice of guilt and condemnation. This morning, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While that song is playing out, the blessing, the deacon's going to wait upon you. Come around and pick up your love gifts. Uh, pick up your, your cups this morning and the uh, elements that we've used this morning. Praise the Lord. We want to take this opportunity to greet our online worshipers who have joined us this morning. God bless you. See you next week. Same time, same place. Amen.